Okay, so in this video we want to look at solving exponential equations and inequalities. Um, so we have a few different tools. Um, down the track we will need to potentially use logarithms, but that's a last resort if our other strategies don't work. So the first strategy we want to look at is really just focused on index laws. And our first aim, if it's possible, is to express both sides of the exponential equation as a single power with the same base and then we can equate the powers, okay? So for example, if, sorry, so what we're aiming for is if we can get it written as a to the power of x is equal to a to the power of y, then the only way that's true is if x is equal to y. I wanna be clear about what, what's not happening. What you're not doing from here to here is you're not canceling the a's, you're not dividing by a. If you divide a to the power of x by a, you don't get um, x, you get, x, um, so if you do a to the x divided by a, you get a to the x minus 1. So you're not dividing by a by cancelling the a's. You're not cancelling the a's at all. You are simply equating the powers. You are simply saying if a to the power of one thing is equal to a to the power of another thing, the only way that's true is if those two things are actually equal. Okay? So you're not doing any cancelling. I want to be really clear about that. Now, obviously, this method only works where it's possible to express both sides with the same base. And there are lots of equations where this won't be possible, and for that, we'll need to use logarithms. So we'll come back to exponential equations once we've um, introduced logarithms in a couple of lessons' time. So, but we want to focus on this strategy because it is the best option if it's possible. So trying to focus on, first of all, expressing both sides of the equation as a single power with the same base. So 5 to the power of x on the left, 625 is 5 to the power of 4, okay? And so the um, cube root of, sorry, I was thinking that I made a mistake in the previous video just looking at that number, but I think I'm okay. Um, so if 5 to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of 4, then that tells us the only way that's true is if x is equal to 4. Okay, so I don't want to see crossing out of the fives. You're not cancelling fives. I don't want to see dividing by fives. I just want to see exactly what I've written here. 5 to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of 4. Therefore, x is equal to 4. Okay. All right, second one, we want to, let's have a think about, we could write a base of 2, but we don't need to go as low as 2. We can leave it with a base of 4 because 64 is 4 cubed. So 4 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 4 cubed. And so that means that x plus 1 is equal to 3. And so therefore, x is equal to 2. All right, part C, focusing on the same base first of all. So we can write both sides with a base of 3. So we have 3 to the power of 2 minus x equals, now 27 is 3 cubed to the power of 2x plus 3. So it's 3 to the power of 2 minus x. We multiply powers here. So we've got 3 to the power of 6x plus 9. And now we can equate the powers. So 2 minus x is equal to 6x plus 9. So we add x, subtract 9, 2 minus 9 is minus 7, and so x is going to be negative 1. 3 to the power of x is equal to 26. Now 26 is not a power of 3, so we can't use this method and we're going to need logs. We'll come back to this one later. So I want to be clear about the fact that actually more equations than not are not going to be solved by this method. 3 to the power of x, the only way we'd be able to do it if we have something that's a power of 3 sitting over here. Okay. So the minute, oh sorry, um, just dropped my pen. Um, the minute it's 3 to the power of x equals something that isn't a power of 3 and more numbers are not powers of 3 than are powers of 3, um, then you're going to need logs and we'll come back to that one. Okay, whenever I think about exponential inequations, so to solve an exponential inequation, we still aim to express both sides as a single power with the same base, but then you have to give some thought about how you actually relate the exponents. My apologies. Um, you have to give some thought about how you're actually going to relate the exponents. So, um, um, so we want to think about the fact that if a to the power of x is bigger than a to the power of y, and if the base is bigger than 1. So for example, if we're saying that 2 to the power of x is bigger than 2 to the power of y, the only way that's going to be true is if x is bigger than y. Okay. However, if the base is a fraction, if it was half to the power of x is bigger than half to the power of y, well actually, in that case, that would mean that x is smaller than y. What I would say to you is I wouldn't really worry about this at all. 
I would focus on writing the inequality with um, whole number bases. So for example, in this second example, you could instead write this as 2 to the negative x is bigger than 2 to the negative y. And then you can still say that negative x is bigger than negative y. And multiplying by negative 1 means that um, x is smaller than y. Okay. So you can think about it that way. Easier to think about always writing a whole number base. The other thing is that you use a graph. In fact, that's really what we're doing. With our, um, any non-linear inequality, what we're saying here is if I've got, you know, a, a graph here, which one, you know, where is one bigger than the other? So you can think graphically about them as well. I'll perhaps have a look at that with a concrete example. Um, so 6 to the power of x is less than 36. That is 6 to the power of x, sorry. 6 to the power of x is less than 6 to the power of 2, and so therefore x has to be less than 2. If you think about this graphically, you're looking at 6 to the power of x, which looks something like that, less than 36, which is that, y equals 36 is a constant, y equals 6 to the x, that number there is 2, and obviously um, 6 to the power of x is smaller than 36 when x is less than 2, so back here. Okay, so you can always think about it graphically, just like we do for quadratic and cubic inequalities. In fact, any non-linear inequality, um, a graphical solution is really the best one. But these simple exponential equations, we can probably think it through a bit logically. So 3, um, three to the power of 3x minus 1 is bigger than 81, which is 3 to the power of 4. And so therefore, 3x minus 1 is bigger than 4. Solving the inequality adding 1 to both sides, so 3x is bigger than 5, dividing by 3, so x has to be bigger than 5 thirds. Okay, so here we have half to the power of x is less than 1 eighth. So as I said, I would focus on writing things with the whole number base. So I would write this as 2 to the negative x, and 1 eighth is 2 to the negative 3. And then I would simply say well, negative x is less than negative 3. And then once you're here in this linear inequality space, you can focus on the fact that, okay, now I'm going to need to divide both sides by a negative. And so I flip the sign when I do that. So x has to be bigger than 3. Okay. All right, exponential equations requiring substitution. So this is where you need to be able to sort of recognize that you have a familiar pattern happening here. One of the big triggers needs to be also that we've got addition and subtraction here. And even if we write everything with the same base, there's no rules for adding and subtracting powers with the same base. x cubed plus x to the power of 4 is not x to the power of 7. It's not x to the power of 12. It's just x cubed plus x to the 4. So the fact that we've got addition and subtraction means you're not going to be able to collect these together as a single power. And so we need a different strategy here. Now, what I want to actually look at is the sort of pattern of what I've got happening here. 2 to the power of 2x is the same as 2 to the power of x squared. And then we've got 9 times 2 to the power of x. And then we have plus 8. So if you can see it without making the substitution, that's fine. But if you think about, let, I usually use the letter u, but it doesn't matter. You can use anything. Don't use x. You've already got x in the problem. If I let u equal 2 to the power of x, my equation becomes u squared minus 9 times u plus 8. It's a quadratic equation. It's those pesky quadratics again. If you still don't know how to factorize, you're in trouble. Um, so solving the quadratic, factors of 8 that add up to negative 9, minus 8 and minus 1. And so we get u equals 8 or u equals 1. However, we weren't solving for u. We introduced that to help us. So we're going to put our u back as 2 to the power of x. So that means 2 to the power of x equals 8 or 2 to the power of x equals 1. So 8 is 2 cubed. So this means that x equals 3. 1 is 2 to the power of 0. And so this means that x equals 0. So we get two possible solutions to that equation. Same sort of strategy in the next one, but we need to do a bit more manipulation here. So we've got 9 to the power of x. I want to think about 9 to the power of x as being 3 squared to the x. So that's the same as 3 to the x squared. And then I'm also going to bring everything over onto the same side. And so again, if we make a substitution by letting u equal 3 to the power of x, we're going to have u squared 
minus 10u plus 9 equals 0. We can solve the quadratic and then we can put u, um, we can put 3 to the power of x back into the equation. Factors of 9 that add up to negative 10, u minus 9, u minus 1, and so we get u equals 9 or u equals 1. So subbing 3 to the x back in, okay, that is 3 to the power of x equals 9 or 3 to the power of x equals 1. And then you have two simple little um, exponential equations. Three. So 3 to the x equals 3 squared, which means x equals 2. In this case, 3 to the x equals 3 to the 0, which means that x equals 0. So two solutions to your quadratic equation there. So the big trigger there is going to be, as I said, you're adding and subtracting. There's no index laws that's going to allow you to combine those together. And so thinking about, well, can I make a substitution to reveal a sort of hidden quadratic equation, solve that, and then um, put my exponential back in. So the work today is from exercise 13D.